to jump in here and kind of just pause the video to explain the situation because when I edited this footage together I was just racing way too fast through all of the content and I need to kind of explain the situation. So in 2022 I went on my first ever solo adventure overseas. I went to the UK for a month and I had a, quite a few things planned out, awesome B&Bs booked, uh, but I entitled this sketchbook Where the Wind Blows because I left a lot up to chance and I was really interested in just experiencing whatever this trip wanted to throw at me. Uh, it was a big learning curve for, for me and you know, gathering some independence and that sort of thing. Little did I know <laughs> that at the very start of the trip, everything was gonna go to shit. So my trip to, where was I going first? I was going to, I was going to London. So I was going from Melbourne to Perth and that was delayed. Melbourne to Perth was delayed until like one in the morning. So I had to stay in the airport till one in the morning. The Perth flight to London, which was a long haul 20 hour flight was delayed again. <laughs> and so that was a mess. They booked me on different flights because obviously I missed all my connecting flights. So I was going direct to Edinburgh, not direct, but like that was my first destination was Edinburgh in Scotland. That's where I wanted to start this adventure. Uh, but because of these delays, all my flights got messed up. So they ended up taking me to, to London eventually. <laughs> and then from London to Dublin in Ireland, which was not part of the plan. So I was, you know, jet lagged walking around Dublin airport. And then I was going to Edinburgh Airport. Now, yeah, because of all these delays, I was probably traveling for all, about like 44 hours all up, which should have been about 21 hours, 22, something like that. So all my plans were messed up. <laughs> I had B&Bs booked, I had uh, car hire booked, all were very time sensitive and I thought I allowed enough time, but when you're like 10 or 12 hours overdue, that's not going to happen. So to cut a long story short, I eventually got to Edinburgh at like 10.30 PM at night. The airport was pretty much dead. There was no staff on. I had, it was too late to get my car hire. My first accommodation was the bridge house, which you'll see in a few pages onwards. And that was a two hour drive from the airport. So since I didn't have my car, I didn't have any way of getting to my accommodation two hours in the country. <laughs> I was stuck in the airport. I had nothing to do, nothing to do. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had no phone reception. I had no internet. It was, it was a disaster. Um, but I got saved and yeah, <laughs> this is going to sound pretty weird, but I met somebody, uh, a very lovely lady who offered me to stay at her house in Edinburgh because she she also lost her luggage. That's something I should mention is during this process of all this mess, my luggage was lost. So my luggage didn't even turn up in Edinburgh. So everything was an absolute disaster. <laughs> so she also lost her luggage and that's how we kind of got talking and bonding and everything. And she asked me like five different times throughout the night would you like to stay at our place? We, we live in Edinburgh, we've got a spare room. And I kept saying, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Eventually I took her up on the offer because I had nowhere else to go. And I'm like, well, if this is how I'm gonna die, <laughs> this is how it goes. And so I just went with it. And it was the best thing I ever did because I ended up at this Stevenson house. So this first page is just uh, <laughs> a little representation of the chaos that I've just described to you. Uh, Melbourne, Perth, London, Dublin, Edinburgh. And this is the Stevenson House, a beautiful three-story terrace building. And it's actually the home of Robert Louis Stevenson uh, in the 18, well, from 1850 to 1894 that he lived. But he's his childhood home and he is the creator of Treasure Island, Jekyll and Hyde etc etc so a house with a lot of history and the family that lives in there are just the most beautiful people I've ever met so generous to have put me up in their house <laughs> a complete stranger um, it was the best so the next morning very jet-lagged I got my new hire car and I had to buy a whole new clothes of course and 
did a lot of shopping and I was on the road to my first accommodation, the Bridge House, which was supposed to be two nights, but ended up only one night. Now the Bridge House is an absolutely beautiful, gorgeous place. I'm sure there's a lot of history that I could go into, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. Um, I found this Bridge House when Googling stuff for my story and it's the home of my character Pan. So I really wanted to be able to stay here and do a little bit of painting. Unfortunately, I didn't get to paint as much as I wanted to because I had so little time to be there and just the chaos of the trip in general was nuts. My next accommodation was supposed to be a week in Edinburgh in a hostel. However, my lovely new hosts at the Stevenson house actually said, don't stay at a hostel, come and stay with us. And they let me stay with them for a week which was just so amazing. Um, I had family dinners with them, bonded with them, and got to see a lot of great things around Edinburgh. This is one of my favorite little paintings of Edinburgh Castle um, from the Victoria Gardens. I may be making a mistake in naming them that. <laughs> I haven't done my research while doing this, but it's the gardens right next to the castle. I loved just sitting there and painting that. Went to the Scottish National Gallery as well. Uh, I'm going through this very fast, but this is a little trip I did down to Dean Village, which is like a 20 minute walk from where I was staying. Beautiful place, very quick painting, so it's not really, I'm not really that fond of it to be honest, but it's all a learning process. I found a bar called The Cauldron, and that place was very kind of like Harry Potter inspired. That was just around the corner from where I was staying, so I loved the drawing of that place. Oh my gosh, this trip is just like bananas. I want in here I wanted to do more streetscapes of Edinburgh because it's such a beautiful city however <laughs> that's as far as I got um, this is a little tale actually that I wanted to read to you it's a poem that's written outside the Stevenson house um, for we are very lucky with a lamp before the door and Leary stops to light it as he lights so many more and oh before you hurry by with your ladder and your light oh Leary see a little child and nod to him tonight. So after spending a week in Edinburgh, which was absolutely amazing, there's so much stuff that I just don't have time to tell you about. I made my way down to one of my own favorite spots in England. Uh, I got the train down and stayed with my family in the New Forest. Uh, this is a beautiful area. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, my auntie lives down there, so I stayed with her. That's her house just there. Uh, everything about this place is just absolutely beautiful. There are wild horses and donkeys and animals and forests to explore. So I had a great time. However, I also got COVID at that point. <laughs> So I was locked up in their spare room for quite a while. Um, there's some blank pages there. Uh, and the New Forest is also actually quite close to Salisbury, which is my hometown, where a lot of my other family's from. Um, I have a lot of history with this place. Uh, I went there on my last trip and let's, I'm not gonna go into it, but a lot of things happened. <laughs> No, I guess I could. I proposed to my ex-fiancé in, in my hometown quite a few years ago, so it was really bittersweet to be able to go back and kind of just reclaim these spaces for myself. Do you know what I mean? Every time I always paint Salisbury Cathedral, every time I go, so this was a very small little painting, but really enjoyable. Other times I've painted like really big parts and it's just really complicated. Uh, I also visited, visited Avery Stone Circle, which I've never seen before. So that was really awesome. Um, and just around the corner is Silbury Hill, uh, an old hill fort, man-made hill, hill fort from ancient times. Um, but yeah, so, so far, like even though I did get COVID and the trip was just absolute chaos, I did have a lot of great memories and uh, a lot of cool paintings and drawings and stuff. So after I recovered from COVID, uh, it was time to move on to my other locations. I wanted to stay like one night in Winchester, so I did that and I saw like um, the, the Great Hall and Winchester Cathedral and uh, just a little drawing of King Arthur there. I kind of used brush pens in that one. Uh, my next town, I was going to Arundel. I actually stayed like, stayed like 
almost a week in Arundel, which was a little bit too long, but my accommodation was absolutely beautiful just across the river with the <laughs> the view of the castle, which was so cool. I uh, visited the castle quite a few times. There was a festival on at the time, which was awesome. And the town is just really quaint and did a lot of drawings and pubs and stuff, which you'll see me do quite a few times in these videos. Um, and then I just wanted to draw just some stuff from my imagination because I kind of just got like, I just need to draw something just free and easy without just trying to draw something that I'm seeing in front of me. Um, so a bit more pub drawing here. Uh, and also kind of just making a castle out of my imagination after looking at castles. So that was a good little exercise there. My next destination was Glastonbury in England. Um, I stayed at this beautiful little B&B directly underneath the tour. And my God, what a magical place. I also stayed an extra week in Glastonbury. Uh, I've been here a couple of times before, but I never stayed this long because I really wanted to like soak in the atmosphere of the place and visit a few things and do a lot of painting and drawing. This is one of my favorite drawings I've done of the tour ever. Just a simple pen and ink drawing, but yeah, really love doing that. Um, this video, my God, I'm just gonna let this play. So I was sitting around at night and a solo adventure is actually kind of very contrasty because you're by yourself and it can get a little depressing sometimes. And I was just sitting at home and uh, decided I'm just gonna go up to the tour again at night. I had nothing else to do. I'd been up there a couple of times already and I was surprised by music and dancing and just the most beautiful sunset I could have ever imagined. It was so cool. Uh, this is the Glastonbury Abbey where supposedly King Arthur is buried. <laughs> uh, very cool place. And I really, really learned a lot by painting these things as well. I really um, am quite happy with these little paintings and drawings. This one is a little composition of the Chalice Well Gardens. Um, it's a lot of mystical energy and history with the Chalice Well, but I wanted to sit and draw a little bit there. Um, I did get some strange looks for some reason, but that's kind of just what happens when you're outside drawing. Uh, but yeah, definitely enjoyed doing this one. I actually drew the Chalice Well upside down which I didn't mean to do, but I kind of had to just wing that. That's another picture of the tour that I really love. It's very, very little, but I really love that one. Um, but yeah, that one took me a while to complete. I had to do that over a few different nights, I think. My next destination was Cheddar Gorge, and I had a really beautiful walk um, along the cliff tops of Cheddar Gorge. I also went to the caves and all sorts of things, but this walk in particular was just so cool i just let my imagination take a hold of me i was humming tunes i had a walking stick <laughs> i was just being really silly by myself and i freaking loved it now i've put this video in here because we're on top of cheddar gorge and you can actually see in the distance the glastonbury tour on the little hill there and i found that just so fascinating because i wasn't expecting it and i'd driven you know an hour or so out of glastonbury so i found that pretty fascinating so my next destination was 
Fantasy Forest Festival. I would looked this up before I went and I'm like, I definitely need to go to this place. This is going to be amazing. So Fantasy Forest Festival is actually held at Sudley Castle and Castle Grounds and they have live music and people in costumes and it was just amazing. It was like a two or three day festival and I was super lucky enough to get some accommodation that was like right just down the road. So I would walk there, have a great time, drink a lot of cider, <laughs> do a lot of dancing, buy a lot of cool stuff, and then just walk home at night. And it was just, yeah, by, all by myself as well. So it was very magical, kind of inspiringly independent time for me. Here's another couple of sketches that I kind of didn't finish yeah, I kind of failed at this travel sketchbook, to be honest, because I've started a lot of things and never finished them. Um, but I was also like, you know what, this is a holiday, I'd be waiting years for this. Uh, this is in the Cotswolds in Bybury. I had this beautiful um, Airbnb in an old pigeon house, I can't remember what they called, the Dovecot, that's it. And Arlington Row, another little painting there, a very, very famous row of really old houses, which you should check out because they're beautiful. And I also wanted to check out Kelmscott Manor, which is William Morris's home and studio, and he did a lot of his work there. Absolutely beautiful place. Uh, you can do lots of tours inside. Another unfinished drawing, unfortunately. Then I went back to the New Forest and stayed with my auntie for the last little portion of my trip. Did a little drawing there. And unfortunately, that's kind of it. <laughs> I did not paint as much as I wanted to, but the trip was absolutely worthwhile, no matter what. So let's get back to the main sketchbook. Getting back to Melbourne, settling back into life again, went to see Doctor Strange, so I did a bit of drawing there. These are just some random things. I got some gold ink, which was really fun. Um, recommend playing around with that. Another bunch of random stuff. Just trying to figure out where my life was going to head after being on holiday for so long. Um, nothing and nowhere great that's very inspiring martin uh, i like drawing little mini me so i'm not gonna lie um making plans for the future here just kind of working up working up ideas oh this is ideas from my gallery in my studio that i was planning on opening uh in my new place so i ended up moving to the hills in the dandenong ranges in victoria and got a little place that I could open a shop in. So trying to come up with ideas for what I would call my shop, I ended up going for Otherworld, which you'll see a bit later on. Um, just a little bit more drawings of wildlings and fairies and some more gold ink. It doesn't scan very well, but it looks good in person when you reflect the light on it. So I guess here I was just kind of thinking about how I can improve my life and slay my own demons. Um, no distractions until 4pm. Exercise every day. Do something you don't want to do every day. And a soul day just for me. Um, good ideas in theory. Did I stick to it? No, I didn't. But maybe I should come back to trying to do that. This was another little fairy I did for a sticker. Now, Otherworld Studios. This is something that I've actually decided not to do now, but for a long time I was gearing up to do this. Uh, this was the logo I decided to work on, and here is the logo and the studio space. Um, it was a pretty cool idea, but at the moment with my recent things going on, I've just kind of put it on hold. Uh, but I may come back to that at some stage. Just some more random doodles here. Fairies and goblins and cute girls with pointy ears. It's kind of what I do. Uh, little Baphomet. I'm not sure how I feel about Baphomet, but I kind of wanted to draw him, so there you go. Uh, and now we're getting into Wanderings Volume 2 stuff. So wanted to do this. Obviously, that my new book has been on Kickstarter this year. You probably would have seen something about it. It was really well received and super stoked about that. Uh, but this was uh, sort of just kind of figuring out what the cover would be. What could I do for the cover? 
So I kind of just did some pen sketches. Sometimes it's easier to draw with pen just really loosely. Um, I don't know, sometimes it's just like that. It takes me back to the nightmares and visions times. I did a lot of pen sketches in when I was doing that project. Um, yeah, not really much I can say about these guys, just random pencil stuff and my, my character pan. And uh, this was my friend M Kitty. <laughs> I owed her a drawing for so many years, so I finally did that. So in my new hometown of Sassafras in the Hills, uh, we have Miss Marple's Tea Room across the road. Beautiful, old looking building. It's not actually old. It just, it's made to look old. However, I think it's been there for about 30 years. Um, so I wanted to draw a little painting of that. I actually want to do like a bigger proper one, but I'll get to that at some stage. Uh, just some more pen and ink drawings and yeah I guess just trying to find my way again it's it's really difficult when you've been on a path and then you've been on holiday and you're just trying to figure out what you're doing in life um, been working a lot of board game stuff throughout all of what I've been showing you as well so a lot of client work and I haven't really had a lot of time and motivation for my own stuff um, and at the moment I'm just doing all the Kickstarter things, so I'll get back to my own projects at some stage. Uh, King Henry's is a little restaurant close by, so I wanted to draw a little portrait of King Henry there. He's a funny old chap, isn't he? And ah, this is uh, not an original, but this is some artwork I did for a Green Man sticker for the, for the shop. And playing around with some of the sepia ink that I found around the studio. And since moving to the hills, I've made some really cool friends who I play D&D with every month or a couple of months. So that's my character, Tavern Copperleaf. He is a halfling bard who, instead of plays music, he paints and draws. It's kind of weird. We have Archimond, Trisparis, Amiria, and Amiria. I love Amiria. She's so cute. And Helio Grace. It's been interesting. This is my first real D&D campaign with these guys. Uh, so it's really, really, really fun and definitely a learning curve. I also did another trip, a very, very short trip and a very spontaneous trip to Colorado. So that was my Folorado painting of just a bit of practice and drawing some paintings before I headed over there. These are some sticker designs, just chucking that in there <laughs> but yeah so i'm about to head on a trip to colorado and you will see in the next page just a couple of drawings that i did while i was there i stayed in golden colorado absolutely beautiful place probably the coolest place i've been in america so far i haven't been very many places in america but i'm glad i went here because god it was just so pretty it, it was just incredible um, again, didn't paint as many things as I wanted, but it was a very spontaneous trip and um, I was spending time with friends, so I was kind of just more prioritizing that. I went to my first proper renaissance fair. Holy crap. It was so freaking cool. As you can see, didn't paint as nearly as much as I wanted to, um, but look, I'm happy with the little bits that I did try and do here and there. I had a fantastic time anyway. Uh, this was the Red Rocks in Colorado where a lot of amazing musicians have played over many years. Uh, and then, you know, getting back home and, and doing what I do best is just drawing random creatures and stuff. And I think we're almost at the end of this sketchbook. We're getting there. We are getting there. Just at this stage, I'm just filling the pages. I'm just so eager to finish this sketchbook and move on to the next one. Um, and, you know, writing myself little pep notes reclaimed by magic. You know, that's what you've got to do. Oh, and that's a little picture of my partner, Victoria, just there. Uh, this is around the time that I kind of met her. Um, and another little slogan, which is actually from my story. It's a glimmer is not enough. Maybe I'll go into that at some stage. I like this page actually, it's quite colourful. Um, for the longest, yeah, I really wanted to get into more like watercolouring characters because I've done so much watercolour on my travel journals, but I haven't really been watercolouring my 
characters, so I kind of wanted to get back into that and do a bit more colourful stuff in the sketchbook to wrap it up. And this is a prime example of me wanting to do that, like drawing fairies with brightly coloured wings and green leafy goblins. You know, getting back into my crazy little borders and bits and pieces. And a little bit more wonderings to cover design stuff. Still trying to figure out. I went through a few different covers for wonderings too. Um, I couldn't decide on what I wanted to do. <laughs> This is the final page of my 2023 sketchbook. Just some cute girls to wrap it up, why not? And some foli foliage bordering. <laughs> I can't talk today. Please bear with me, guys. It's been a long process trying to film this video <laughs> with uh, all my animals in the house. You might have heard some cats in the background. But there you go, all done. I've shown you all through my 2023 and 2022 sketchbooks and my travel stuff and ranted and raved about all the things that I've been up to. So if you like this video, please remember to drop a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.